Hello again, and welcome to part two of the MDF boat, Will It Float? Uh, last episode, I talked about how I envisaged this working, and we cut out the bottom of the hull, um, and we actually managed to get some curves and shape into it. Um, and this is important because curves add a little bit of stiffness and rigidity, and that's how we're going to get away with using three millimeter um, MDF as the core material in this boat. Uh, if you don't understand what core material, uh, etc., is and fiberglass sandwich construction, um, go and have a look at the first video. Um, it's the one before this one, um, and I explain all of that. But I'm not going to go into it now. But thank you for joining me. If you come from the first video, and we'll continue on at the end of this video. Hopefully, you will see the shape of the boat stitched together, marked out, cut out, all that stuff. So at the end of the last video, you saw I curved the back of the boat. We call this the transom uh, because I wanted like a bit of shape in the back of the boat rather than just have it square and boxy. Square and boxy doesn't look too great. So I said before, this is an ugly little boat, but I don't want it to be that ugly. So here I am using a bit of scrap that actually had a curve in it, trying to come up with a curve that I like. And really this isn't working. I'm drawing lines everywhere, standing back looking at it, and no, not happy, not happy. <clears throat> so we're back to using nails and a batten because that makes a little bit more sense. And we're going to just measure the same amount on either end of this uh, bit of 18 mil plywood and hammer some nails in and bend a batten around it. Because bending a baton, that always works. Here we go, we'll bend. Ah! Oh, damn, like, anyway. So clearly we need another baton and probably a little bit less of a curve. So I have uh, remarked the edges now uh, with a little bit less of a curve because that was clearly expecting too much. <clears throat> you get that. Bang, 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 bang. There we are. Now I've gone off and got another baton. That doesn't look any better than the first one. <sighs> things can be frustrating. Anyway, this is actually a sail batten, uh, and therefore it's tapered. So you'll notice the curve isn't the same on both sides. So I flip it over and roughly use the same part of it on both sides to get something roughly symmetrical. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks all right. I think a blind man would be glad to see it as an old boss of mine used to say. Anyway, back to the jigsaw. Zzz, zzz. Don't cut through the horse. Zzz. And then we lift it over the horse. And you can see with um, a little bit of chopping and, and uh, jigsawing there, uh, we have ourselves a nice curve. And then we clamp it to the back of the boat and just check it out and see if the Mark 1 eyeball is happy with what we've got. And you can see it's a fairly flat bottom, but it's not totally flat and it does have a little bit of boatiness to it. And so that's what we're after. I think this is all right. So obviously we will fix that little trans, uh, transom former curve on to the boat. And then we'll talk about marking out the sides. Now what I did is I supported the bottom with little blocks of wood everywhere and a measuring tape on the floor. See the little blocks of wood under there with the measuring tape on the floor to make sure it's roughly symmetrical. I'm pretty sure it's not, but it's not far from it. Put a big block in the middle to hold the center section flat because that's where the seat will support it. And I put a little block under the transom there, back of the boat, to um, just give it a little bit of front and back curve. And then I supported this bit of scrap with uh, just anything in the workshop, like there's a bit of railway line and some old bits of veranda posts there, and marked this curve around what will be the side of the boat. Uh, just get that last little bit, that's pretty good. Now, this is where things get sketchy. I'm not happy about doing this at all, uh, but I want to cut this sheet in half because each half will be the left and right, port and starboard side of the boat. So here I go through the saw here, and at this point I realize I have put the tail roller way too far back. So what do I do now? You know, I'm just going to push it over. There we are. Bang. Um, bzzz, I forgot to make saw sounds. Bzzz, and now it's jammed, so... Rather than try and force it while I'm cutting it, I'm just lifting the sheet clear. Now I've got to position it back over the saw blade again. And um, where we... Why does this saw sound like a dentist drill? I don't know. Anyway, that was pretty bad. Don't do this at home, ladies and gentlemen. 
boys and girls. Anyway, so what I did was I cut my former, um, I put my former on top of the two side bits, the bit that I marked out the side, and clamped it all together so stuff won't move around. When you're cutting like stacks of sheet here, and there's three stacks in this, the the bit that I marked with the pencil and the two square bits that um, I made a terrible mess of ripping down the middle. And I'm just cutting along the line that I marked with the pencil with the jigsaw. So once again, crawling around on the floor because I can't be bothered cleaning up the bench off behind me. And now we have the job of putting this onto the actual edge of the boat. And this is obviously going to be a bit of a trick. So I've temporarily screwing these little tags of wood, we'll call them cleats, um, to the edge of the boat so it has something to rest on while I'm putting it together. This will just be stitched together with cable ties and holes drilled. And here you can see I've done exactly that. So careful uh, not to drill into the hand here doing this. I, the hand is awfully off to the edge. I do wish that, you know, I had another pair of hands to help me with this, but like it went okay. So this is definitely a you can do it by yourself thing. Uh, then you have to duck down and put the cable tie through. Uh, without knocking it off all the little cleats you screwed on. I'm down there somewhere. There we are. Up it comes and you pull the cable tie tight and that'll pull the two edges together, the side and the bottom. The holes were a little bit far from the edge. Um, you can see by the one close to the bottom of the screen there. Um, and they wanted to pull the edges past each other. I think if I did this again, I would um, have some faith that the MDF isn't going to pull out. The hole's not going to pull out. And the edge would like work basically. So and then you like have a look at it and you go, eh, looks all right, looks all right. Got that last little bit to do there, but that'll just be the same. More cable ties, more holes. I'm not gonna show you that, it's enough of that already. So I've been going here for like, I don't know, I think five or six hours. And this is what I've got. It's only, it's only just stitched together at the moment. I'm going to pull it all apart and fiddle with things a little bit more. But you can see, basically, this is going to be, this is how stitch and glue is done. Uh, usually, in the old days, they used copper wire that was twitched together. I'm using cable ties because, like, that's easier. Um, but I will put thickened epoxy around the edges. Uh, there's going to be a bulkhead here with the mast um, step. There'll be a seat about here. There's a bit of fudging to do to work out that, but that's where that will be. Um, and there'll be, on the transom, there'll be this bit of 18 mil ply. Yes, I know I'm cheating. This is not MDF. But it's, you know, I have a whole bunch of it over there. I'll use some of it. Um, the rest of the transom will be 3 mil, and there'll be another bit of 18 mil at the top because you need somewhere to bolt an outboard and a rudder that's reasonably skookum, mortgage strong but um it's ugly but it isn't just a flat bottom with straight sides on it you can see we have a little bit of um a little bit of shape in the transom that looks pleasing to the eye actually when the seat goes in the sides will splay slightly um the stem post i've just put this bit in here temporarily i'm actually thinking of spreading this a little bit and filling the gap with thickened epoxy remember all of this is going to be covered with uh, 200 gram glass and epoxy and fed so this will be painted quite nicely i hope and um and and that will add a little bit of flair to the front because at the moment it looks like one of those great lake freighters that you see like storming around in uh, north america anyway I think that's enough for today. Um, I'm pretty happy actually, given like I didn't really have a plan and this is all done by eye. We'll see what happens next. Maybe this is false optimism. <laughs>